Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You know, the color yellow is one of the most amazing colors on the color wheel when you think about it. It's the color of so many awesome things in the world, such as Wario, Pac-Man, the Nintendo Switch Lite, this booklet filled with concept art for Sonic Mania, and then there are the yellow things that you can't live life without, such as the sun, pizza, bananas, lemons, and... There was something else in this category that yelled that I know, but I forgot what it was. <sighs> Two hours later. Oh! <laughs> this guy, right? SpongeBob SquarePants, one of the most iconic cartoon characters on the planet. A sea sponge who wears square pants and works at a fry cook at a fast food restaurant and lives in a pineapple under the sea. What? It's a unique and bizarre concept, but it made for a phenomenal TV series, even all these years later. All it takes is one crazy, interesting, yet understandable idea, and the world becomes that much better because of it. SpongeBob has had quite a remarkable track record, so today, I'll be going over the history of the show, from its development to the premiere in 1999, to where we are now as of June 2020, and discuss how Spongebob went from just another Saturday morning cartoon to a worldwide phenomenon that's considered blasphemy if you don't watch it in some countries. Now keep in mind, I'll mostly be going over the TV show itself, not any events like the time when giant Spongebob balloons were stolen off the roofs of Burger King in 2004, or the 2007 lawsuit when Hillenburg was sued by Troy Walker claiming the pilot of Spongebob is almost a direct copy of his creation, Bob Spongy, the unemployed sponge that he created in the early 90s. Things like this don't influence the series, so I'm sticking to the core show and the theatrical films. I also won't be saying things like, this is the episode where the quality officially started to decrease. That's too specific, and this will be a bit more of a general history of the entire show. But before we start, I have to do this. Now, on to the history. SpongeBob SquarePants was created by former marine biologist and animator Stephen Hillenburg. His professional career started at the Orange County Marine Institute as a marine biology professor, and he created a comic book called The Inner Tidal Zone for the Institute. It was about sea creatures at the Thai land on the ocean shore. Later, he attended Cal Arts for a career in animation. After his time at Cal Arts, he started working on a cartoon called Rocco's Modern Life for Nickelodeon. Here, he met several crew members and voice actors who would later work with him on his own show. Derek Dryman, Tim Hill, Mr. Lawrence, and Tom Kenny, just to name a few. After Rocco ended in 1996, Martin Olsen, a writer on that show, saw the inner title zone and thought that Ellenberg could create a show based on that comic book. After much consideration, he decided to create a show based on sea creatures in general. When thinking about the star character, he was inspired by popular media such as Laurel and Hardy, Jerry Lewis, and Pee Wee Herman. When thinking of what creature should be the protagonist, he came across the sea sponge. He drew a bunch of circle sponges because that's the shape of a normal sea sponge, but he couldn't come up with a design he truly liked. Later, he drew a square sponge, or kitchen sponge, and was sold from there. Later, he talked to Tom Kenny, who he met on Rocco's Modern Life and wanted him to voice the main character, using a voice based on a one-time character Kenny did on Rocco's. More characters were developed over time, including Patrick Starr, Squidward Tentacles, Mr. Eugene Krabs, Sandy Cheeks, Gary the Snail, Sheldon Plankton, etc. Some more settings for the show were created, such as the fast food restaurant, the Krusty Krab, the character's pineapple home, and a boating school. After finalizing the main concepts for the series, he came into Nickelodeon and pitched his series to the executives. He set the pitch to Hawaiian music and brought in a terrarium with models of the characters. The executives loved the pitch and wanted to make the series. Hillenburg directed the pilot during its development in 1997, and with that, Sponge Boy was born. Yeah, the original name of the character was Sponge Boy, with the character not having a last name, and the original name of the series was Sponge Boy Ahoy. But it turned out Sponge Boy was the copyrighted name of a mob, so the character's name was changed to be SpongeBob. Hillenburg also gave the character a last name of SquarePants because it fit the character's square shape, and it had a nice ring to it. 
During future developments, he had several restrictions for the series, including he didn't want SpongeBob to have a love interest, sea sponges are asexual, and he wanted SpongeBob to be the same, not revealing the identity of Pearl's mom or the Krabby Patty secret formula, not having SpongeBob earn his boating license. This is because boating school came as a compromise between Hillenburg and Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon wanted SpongeBob to be a kid, while Hillenburg wanted him adult age with a childlike personality, so boating school was created so they would both be satisfied. No crossovers or spin-offs. And no, Patchy the Pirate appearing in the Big Time Rush episode Big Time Beach Party doesn't count. Hillenburg also wanted this to be a storyboard driven series. Most cartoons write scripts and have storyboard directors draw the panels. This style of writing has the storyboard directors draw the panels and write the dialogue. The series was set in the underwater city of Bikini Bottom, located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, directly under Bikini Atoll, a real-life island which was a testing site for nuclear weapons during the 1950s. And finally, on May 1st, 1999, after the 1999 Kids' Choice Awards, Nickelodeon held a sneak peek premiere of the show, which I consider the official premiere. Episodes 1, Help Wanted, 2, Reef Blower, and 3, Tia the Trito, aired that day and kickstarted the series. The following summer, the official series premiere was held on July 17, 1999, with episodes 4, Bubble Stand, and 5, Ripped Pants. A week later, the pilot was rerun and new episodes from season 1 came out at a pretty frequent pace from 1999 to April 2000. These episodes were loved by many, and the series at the time was very well received by critics and fans alike. The highly positive reception renewed the series for a season 2 in August 1999, which premiered in October 2000 after season 1 finished. Later, Spongebob was renewed for a season 3 in September 2000 and premiered over a year later in October 2001, even though season 2 was still airing episodes at the time. At this time, Spongebob was incredibly popular and loved by people of all ages. Paramount Pictures approached Hillenburg for a film based on the cartoon. Although he was initially hesitant on the idea, he eventually accepted it and became director of the film. After season 3 was finished, the crew shifted focus to the movie. Episodes from seasons 2 and 3 aired sporadically throughout 2003 and 2004 due to production of the film. Season 2 finally finished in July 2003, and Season 3 finished in October 2004. And finally, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie came out on November 19, 2004 in the United States. It was a major success in the box office, gained many more fans, and made SpongeBob even more popular. After the movie came out, Hillenburg wanted to end the series so it wouldn't jump the shark. He set it up so that the film would be the grand finale because it takes place after the entire series. However, the success of the movie made Nickelodeon want to keep the show going for more seasons. Because of this, Steven Hillenburg stepped down from his position as showrunner and appointed Paul Tibbet, a writer and storyboard director from seasons 1, 2, and 3, to the showrunner position. Being one of his favorite writers, Hillenburg trusted Tibbet with this position and this is where things start to get crazy. In May 2005, Season 4 premiered, and reception wasn't quite as positive as Seasons 1, 2, and 3. As Season 4 continued, it was still good, but some people have thought the series felt a little different now, which made some people not want to watch it anymore. Others thought it wasn't funny at all anymore, while some people continued to watch it. Later, in February 2007, Season 5 premiered, and the quality felt all over the place. Season 4 finished later in July 2007. In November 2007, the series aired its first TV film, Episode 181, Atlantis Square Panis, which was during a time where some fans didn't really feel like Spongebob was very good at this point. The following year, in March 2008, Season 6 premiered, and this was considered the biggest rating drop throughout the show's history. The episodes were considered more boring or frustrating, and more people stopped watching because of this. At this point, it felt apparent that Nickelodeon was airing the show just because it was popular. Next year, 2009, was the series' 10th anniversary, and this was when it truly set in how monumental of a success the show was. 
SpongeBob's 10th anniversary was celebrated in July 2009 with a 50 hour TV marathon called The Ultimate SpongeBob Sponge Bash, leading up to 10 new episodes at the end. These new episodes ended off season 5 and started season 7. Later, in November 2009, the series had another TV movie, Episode 240, Truth or Square, a big 10th anniversary special. The following year in 2010, Season 7 continued, but the reaction among fans wasn't much higher compared to Season 6, which finished later in July 2010. However, even with all the bad episodes that came out at this time, SpongeBob was not the worst cartoon ever by any means. Next year in 2011, Season 8 started in March 2011, and Season 7 finished in June 2011. During Season 8, the episodes started to improve in quality, but still had some bad episodes that were as bad as the worst episodes in season 6 and 7. But as a whole, season 8 saw an improvement for the series, even if it was a small improvement. In 2012, a big announcement was revealed, a sequel to the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Later that year, Hillenburg announced he would return to help write the movie. Then in July 2012, season 9 premiered and this marked the show's transition into high definition and Season 8 finished in December 2012. Season 9 felt only slightly better than Season 8, which was still good for the future of the show. Paul Tibbet, the showrunner at this time, became the director of the second film. During 2013 and 2014, Season 9 aired very few episodes because the show stopped production almost halfway through the season to work on the new movie. In 2014, Spongebob went on its biggest hiatus ever. During this time, the second film was given a final title, the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, and was given a release date of February 6, 2015 in the United States, a slight delay from late 2014. When the movie wrapped, the crew shifted focus back to the series, and Steven Hillenburg announced he was going to return to the series after the film. The Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water came out in theaters on February 6, 2015, and was a tremendous success. It helped redeem Spongebob's lack in quality at the time. Despite this, it also marked a big transition for the series. The crew started writing actual scripts compared to being storyboard driven. The series resumed with more season 9 in 2015 and the first official script driven episode premiered that year. The success of the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water led to rumors of the possibility of a third film which was confirmed to be happening later in 2015, even though it wouldn't come out for a few more years. In addition to this, Season 9 saw a gradual improvement in quality after Steven Hillenburg returned. He wasn't the showrunner at this point, but still had an influence. Later in 2015, Paul Tibbet left to work on the third film, and the series had two new showrunners, Mark Ceccarelli and Vincent Waller. Mark Ceccarelli was a writer and storyboard director during seasons 8 and 9, and Vincent Waller was the creative director starting with season 4. The following year, in 2016, the show was renewed for seasons 10 and 11. Season 10 started the following year on October 2016, and season 9 finished in February 2017. At this point in the series, the show is regaining more popularity. Also, side note, this isn't directly related to the actual series, but for me it's worth talking about right now. In 2016, there was a musical based on Spongebob Squarepants that came out in Chicago, Illinois, which came to New York City from 2017 to 2018. It was called the Spongebob Musical, and it was very popular among fans and critics alike. It's not directly related to the series, but to me, it's the only big event outside of the core show that's worth mentioning right here, right now. Now, back to the main series. Just the next month, in March 2017, during the airing of Season 10 episodes, the worst news for any Spongebob fan at this point happened. Steven Hillenburg had been diagnosed with... It was upsetting, but he would still work on the show for as long as he could. Later in 2017, the series was renewed for Season 12, and the third film was confirmed to be coming out in 2020 after being delayed from a 2019 release. In June 2017, Season 11 started while Season 10 was still airing. When Season 11 premiered, Spongebob set the current record for most seasons in a Nicktoon, whereas The Rugrats ended after Season 9, and Season 10 was The Fairly Odd Parents last season. Season 10 of Spongebob later finished in December 2017. 
At this point, the series was in a renaissance and some old fans who gave up on the show started to watch again. People have said it's starting to become funny again, or at the very least, be entertaining. After not talking too much about the third film, we finally got some new information in 2018. The next film was given a title of the Spongebob movie It's a Wonderful Sponge. Tim Hill, a former crew member on the series, took over as director, and the entire movie would be animated in CGI compared to the traditional 2D animation the series is commonly known for. Some people were skeptical about the entire movie being in CGI, but the film wasn't coming out for two more years, so we had some time to digest this announcement. Later, in November 2018, Season 12 premiered and Season 11 finished, and shortly after Season 11 finished, Hillenburg had passed away. It was absolutely devastating for fans, friends, and family of Hillenburg. This brought some uncertainty about the future of the series, but it was later confirmed that Steven Hillenburg himself wanted the show to keep going because he enjoyed his return to Spongebob and loved what the crew was doing on the series. While this was nice to hear for fans, Nickelodeon later announced their plans to sin. In February 2019, Brian Robbins, the new executive of Nickelodeon, decided to create which was directly disrespecting Steven Hillenburg's vision and legacy. Later in June 2019, a concept for a was announced. It was going to focus on a 10 year old Spongebob at Sleepaway Camp and animated entirely in CGI. It would be called Camp Coral Spongebob's Under Years. At this point, Paul Tibbet confirmed that Nickelodeon had plans to sin all along with this tweet and fans went on a riot and wanted it to be cancelled. On the other hand, 2019 was the year of the 20th anniversary, which was celebrated in July 2019 with a new TV movie, Episode 486, SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, a big 20th anniversary special. This special was a tribute to Hillenburg and was well received among fans. The positive reception renewed the show for a season 13. Season 12 continued for the rest of 2019 and into 2020. In November 2019, the third film was given a final title, the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run, and the first official trailer was released. This got fans talking and put to rest some of the worries several people had about the movie. The movie was confirmed to be released on May 22, 2020 in the United States. In 2020, season 12 continued as normal, but due to a stupid and also dumb event that occurred which we do not talk about in this household, the movie was delayed to July 31st, 2020, and then again by one week to August 7, 2020. Even though it's been delayed, people are still excited. Well, that was a general history of SpongeBob over the last 21 years, and it's been quite a ride. A lot has happened, and although not everything has made everybody happy, I'm still amazed at how far we've come. I love the show immensely, and even love all the episodes that people generally consider bad. I've seen every Spongebob movie and episode, and love all of them, so I consider myself the biggest fan for that reason, please don't start a riot. I'm excited for the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run, the rest of season 12, and the future season 13, but I am worried about the future spinoffs. I currently don't know if I'm going to watch them because animated spin-offs usually fail anyways. But no matter what happens with the spin-offs, I'll always love the core series and that's really what every Spongebob fan truly cares about. As for now, all I can do is just wait for the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run to come out. I hope it doesn't get delayed too many more times and I hope it will still come out in theaters so all I can do is just check it for more updates and... Wait, it got delayed again to... October L. Wait. Oh, wait, I was reading it upside down. <laughs> okay. Currently, no more delays. We're good.